So, Schwartz. What can we say about Schwartz? Schwartz first appeared in her... Not quite sure if it took place in the summer or it was just summer theme, but it was definitely a summer event. It happened in Siesta, the original Siesta. She's basically the bodyguard of Ceylon, the daughter of the mayor of Siesta. And they grew up together, like sort of found family. Schwartz is her bodyguard and her character mostly revolves around that dynamic. She played a secondary role in that event. So far, she hasn't had any... She's... She's not really that dynamic of a character, to be honest. In terms of story. She starts out as the bodyguard of Ceylon. She's keeping to herself, not getting too attached to Ceylon. And by the end of the event, she realizes that her loyalties to Ceylon are a lot stronger than her loyalties to anyone else's. But that's basically it for her, to be honest. I don't know why they made her a 6-star, to be honest. <laughs> Aside from, there's gotta be a 6-star for an event, so might as well make... Schwartz, the sixth star, she has a great design. Maybe she should be put to good use later onwards. So, Schwartz. Uh, Schwartz. I'ma put Schwartz in E tier. Judging, just judging from the Siesta storyline, she seems very one note of a character, unfortunately. Maybe when they come back to Siesta, she'll have a bigger role. But for now, she's an E tier. Time for our granddaddy. Heliger, what can we say about Heliger? Heliger is a very old operator. He's been around for a while now. His main connection to the story is that he was an ex-general of Ursus. He knows the Dogastry from the main plotline. He hasn't had any main plotline participation, if I recall. He runs a clinic, or he ran a clinic, for infected patients, I think. Yeah, he's a bird man, he's a Liberi. This was when he was still part of Ursus. So if they ever have an Ursus storyline, they could definitely bring Heliger into it because he's one of the oldest operators in the game. Old as in, he's a grandfather. He is grandfather coded. He's a griffin man, he's a griffin gilf. I really can't say much about Heliger. He hasn't had much story participation. I don't have him, so... I can't say anything about his character bio or if he has any if he has a character story that's unlockable in the bio. I'm not really sure where to place Heliger as a story character. He has a lot of potential. He definitely has a lot of potential if they ever go back to Ursus. Because so far Ursus has been they've been skirting around Ursus for a long time. The only time we've been to Ursus is when we saw a reunion there in their past. And also, oh, oh yeah, the kids, the children of Ursus storyline. So Heliger, I can't be too mean about Heliger because I'm really just neutral about him. I don't know much about him. He has connections to IS2. He has potential to be expanded later on in further Ursus storylines. I'd say I'd put him in mid tier, which is C tier. Heliger has a lot of potential, which is not fulfilled right now. But just because of that potential, it carries him up to C tier from the lower tiers. I think that's fair. Anyway, not like this is rational to begin with. <laughs> We're just fooling around. None of this is actually objective in any way. Okie dokie, moving on. Our girl, Magellan. For those tuning in right now, we are not ranking Arknight's characters in terms of, of waifu material, husbando material, in terms of gameplay. Nope, we're ranking them just in terms of story and lore. That's it. Because that's what I care about the most. So I think that's the one uh, I definitely have the most knowledge on. Yeah, this is a story character tier list instead of a power personal preference tier list. Yes, it is. This is also a very good way for me to introduce people to the characters of Arknights. Because I was thinking, what kind of content should we have in this channel now that we're back? I'm thinking, a tier list is a good way to introduce people to the story of this game. Which I enjoy so much about. It's a win-win. Okay, moving on. Magellan! Magellan! What can we say about Magellan? She is a Rhine Lab operator, but she's not really intertwined with any current Rhine Lab story right now, which is surprising. She's kind of a loner, to be honest. I unlocked Magellan's character story. It mostly goes into her research in the Far North, past Sammy. Because in the world of Arknights, Terra, the Far North is still unexplored territory, and Magellan is our. She was one of the very first explorer characters in the game. 
She's based off a penguin, if you haven't recognized that yet. I think she has a relationship with Emperor. She definitely has a connection with Emperor, like they're friends, but I'm not quite sure of that. She's the only underdeveloped Rhinelab operator left. That is true. She has this cooking collab skin where she makes some shaved ice. Where else has she participated in the story? She hasn't yet. In the future, IS-4 is gonna happen, and that's gonna be based around the, the frigid north of Sami. I think Magellan is gonna have a role in that, I'm not quite sure. So I'm feeling like, even though she's already an existing character, we should probably put her in CN tier. I don't have a CN account, I don't play CN, I'm not quite sure. She doesn't have any major role in any storyline right now. She's mostly a side character, especially involving stuff with Rhine Lab. She's a loner, she doesn't really interact with many characters because of the nature of her job. She's interacted with Santala. The only event of note that we have with her is her being saved by a white-haired mommy from CN server. Yeah, Santala. Santala is an unreleased operator as of the moment. She is CN tier 2. Her name, by the way, is based on Ferdinand Magellan. He was a Portuguese explorer that explored around the world. Okay, since Magellan hasn't had any major participation or, you know, notable stories yet, she's not gonna be higher than mid-tier, which is C-tier. We can kind of consider her pseudo-CN tier because there's still IS-4, which has yet to come out. Do not spoil me on any CN stuff, please. But I'll say that She's about the same as Schwartz on E tier, so yeah. E tier, just because she hasn't had any opportunity to branch out, she doesn't have any interactions with any notable characters yet, and they haven't really done anything with her for now. Next one, we have Mustima, Blue Woman, one of the original Blue Women. So Mustima has had a very interesting history in Arcanites. She's one of the older characters in the game. She is a Sancta, quote-unquote, but she's a fallen angel that ties heavily into her story and character. In the future, there's going to be an event which covers the origins of the Sancta. I don't know if it already happened in CN or not, but it's definitely going to be covered. She definitely has a major, uh, major part in whatever's coming up with Sancta. And Sancta in itself is also heavily tied to the origins of the Sarkas. Mastima is very, very up there in the tiers already. Mastima has major character connections with uh, Lungman. She has major connections with Exia and Penguin Logistics just because of her sister, Exia's sister. They were part of the same squad. It was covered in the previous Laterano event. There are more Laterano events to come, so she has very good potential in the future. She's a fallen angel, which means that she did something that broke the laws of Sanctas. Somehow, that causes a Sanctas Sarkas blood to come back and resurface. So there's a lot of mystery and intrigue going on within the Sancta storyline right now. She's going to play a major part in it. And not just that, her staff, the lock and key. The lock and key is going to be very important in the future. Because the running theory is that there's a god locked up inside of the lock and key staff that she's holding right now. And that god, that Farron myth maybe, it may be influencing some of her Sarkaz traits. So there's a lot of theories, a lot of room to explore with Mostima. And a lot of stuff has already been explored with her, including her past with Exia's sister and everything that happened in the previous Laterano event. But yeah, she definitely has a major role to play in the side events of Ark Knights. She is a very good candidate to have an altar in the future. She's a walking apocalypse. She on her own could be tied to very many things in Ark Knights involving the Sancta. If the next main plot of Ark Knights ends with Victoria, Laterano, and the Sarkaz, it could very well be the very next part of that main plot. I'm just speculating. She's one of the only time manipulators in Ark Knights. That's definitely something to keep track of. Time shenanigans, that definitely has a way to screw with certain plot lines and stories. We don't know what will happen with her, she is definitely up there, okay. So, Mostima! She's already immediately upper tier. Not B tier, A tier. Mostima's A tier. She has lots of potential, she is high potential for an altar. She's tied up to many events, most importantly events involving the Sarkaz, which is basically the main plot of Arknights. 
she's up there. And she has time powers, and she has a god. She's connected to every single important vector that does not involve the seaboard. She maybe has a Farron myth, she has time control powers, which could lead to time shenanigans, and she's part Sarkaz and Sancta, which is tied to the main plot. 